When a ship or vessel is at sea, it must not only contend with ocean storms and huge waves, but also with unanticipated challenges, such as pirate attacks, for which Somali pirates are well known globally. The maritime industry loses $16 billion each year, according to the International Maritime Bureau. Transportation delays are a contributing factor in this loss, but piracy is the main offender. Somalian pirates conduct their attacks in only a few specified locales. The Somalian Sea is one, the Guadafui Passage is another, and the Gulf of Aden is the third and most important place. All ships traveling from Asia to Europe pass through the Gulf of Aden to join the Mediterranean Sea via the Suez Canal. The Gulf of Aden handles a significant amount of global trade. The majority of them are oil transport vessels, and herein lies the threat of Somali pirate attacks. Piracy has been a major challenge for the shipping industry for many thousands of years, not only in the previous few decades. Previously, pirates were not as advanced, but with the assistance of contemporary technology, while pirates have advanced, anti-piracy techniques and weapons have also advanced. Their primary target is commodity transport vessels, which have a small crew while transporting items worth millions of dollars. The majority of pirates' goal is not to kill the ship's crew, but to seize control of the ship or kidnap the captain. Alternatively, take the entire ship hostage and demand millions of dollars from shipping corporations. They don't arrive in one or two boats. Instead, they arrive in groups of thousands, and the number of pirates in these groups has even been documented in the thousands. First, they approach the ships and threaten the captain with gunfire, causing him to stop the ship. Remember that the captain's role is not only to transport the ship from one location to another, but also to ensure the vessel's safety. They then use grappling hooks to climb onto the ship. After ascending to the top, they either kidnap the captain and crew, or in many cases, take the entire vessel to an unknown destination. When a ship carrying products worth millions of dollars enters their custody, the shipping business is more likely to get rid of them for a few hundred thousand dollars. Private ships, on the other hand, make every effort to avoid such situations. In their efforts to flee from pirates, modern ships are no less than everyone else. When a vessel is in danger of a pirate attack, they must first alert the closest coastal security authority. The captain then increases the vessel's speed. The reason for raising the speed is not so that the pirates cannot reach them, but because the ship creates waves, making it difficult for the pirates' little boats to approach the vessel. Now, wait until the Coast Guard arrives and confronts the pirates. During this time, the captain and the rest of the crew must squander the pirates' time. Various modern methods are employed for this task. Water cannons come in first place. Water cannons are deployed aboard practically all ships and are regarded as the most efficient means of deterring pirates. These nozzles are mounted on the four sides of a ship or vessel. Each nozzle is capable of expelling 1350 gallons of seawater in one minute. That is, 5,110 litres of water are released every minute from various nozzles. It has enough water to fill an average-sized swimming pool in 10 minutes. It has a pressure of 175 PSI, which is 10 times that of an automobile tyre. When such enormous pressure strikes the pirates, it can knock them off their boats and, in some circumstances, flip their entire vessel upside down. A joystick in the operations room controls the marine-grade stainless steel nozzle, which is also capable of going into automatic mode. When such high-pressure water strikes the pirates' boats, their ability to operate is drastically reduced. They spend more time attempting to recover control of their boats if they manage to get near the vessel or have a huge yacht. They can be pushed away by aiming the water cannon at their yacht. 2. In addition to water cannons, several ships use similar wheels. Which water is used to fill the pirates' boats? When the pirates approach close enough to the ship, these wheels switch on. The pirates' boats fill up with water 
as a result of the water gushing out of them and their speed reduces. In such a case, the pirates on board are compelled to flee the ship. 3. P-traps. When the first two approaches fail, P-traps are employed. These are the robust steel frames that protrude outward on both sides of the ship and are attached to steel wires. The steel wires are discharged into the water as the pirate approaches the vessel. Pirates frequently utilize speedboats with propellers, and these steel wires become entangled in the propeller, causing the boat's motor to become stuck. Pirates begin to release the boat's engine with steel wires, wasting vital time in the process. LRAD stands for Long Range Acoustic Device. This specialized equipment actually emits a sound beam that causes individuals to flee. It has a range of up to five kilometers and makes this sound. This sound has a tremendously high pitch, so high that humans cannot endure it. The LRAD is frequently used to disperse protesters as well as in anti-piracy operations. 5. In addition to all of these tactics, electric fences are erected on many vessels in the event of a pirate attack. The voltage in this fence is not so high that someone may be electrocuted, but it is also not so easy to touch. However, if this fence is permanently linked to the vessel, the birds on board may perish. As a result, it is folded back and closed as soon as the attack is over. The cargo ship Mask Alabama of the shipping corporation Mask set out from Oman to Kenya in April 2009. Around 1,000 pirates attacked it near the coast of Somalia, putting the crew members at grave risk. Pirates had assaulted an American ship for the first time in two centuries. Ship captain Richard Phillips was among the ship's 21 crew members. The crew deployed flares and the water cannon to dissuade the pirates from approaching the ship. However, two Somali pirates boarded the ship. They walked onto the deck, took control of the ship, and held the crew members hostage, including the captain. The pirates forced the skipper into the lifeboat, abducted him, and fled. They demanded two million dollars in exchange for the captain's freedom. Let me inform you that most lifeboats have limited gasoline, and it's clear they couldn't get too far in that state. The Navy officers pursued the lifeboat in order to prevent the pirates from reaching the coast, because if they made it to the coast, it would be extremely impossible to find them in a corrupt country like Somalia. The Navy sent a chopper flying low near the lifeboat, causing a windstorm. As a result, the sea waves were preventing the lifeboat from reaching the coast. Finally, an American ship was placed in the path of the lifeboat, obstructing its course. Their main objective was to squander the pirates' time so that the fuel in the lifeboat would run out. When the fuel ran out after 80 hours, approximately three and a half days, the pirates agreed to discuss. They demanded that Captain Phillips be carried to the coast of Somalia or they would kill him. There were three pirates in the lifeboat who had kidnapped the skipper. The captain's life will be lost if the Navy makes a single mistake. The Navy dispatched three snipers who decided to eliminate all three pirates at the same time from a distance of 500 meters, 1,640.42 feet. Setting the position and waiting for the perfect time takes several hours. Finally, the moment came when all three pirates were in the sights of the snipers at the same time. Captain Richard Phillips was eventually rescued after all three of them pushed their triggers at the same time. I hope you enjoy and share. Thank you very much for your warm words. See you in the next amazing video.